Welcome to Thursday, July 23rd, 2020. Warm and muggy. Temperatures aren't going to be breaking any records. They're going to actually not be that far from average, but we're adding humidity to the air today and tomorrow, which is going to make it feel really muggy out there. And we're going to be looking at that as something that will be around for a while as high humidity air is in place as that monsoon moisture flow continues to come in from the north. Afternoon and evening thunderstorms will be common, getting into more areas today and tomorrow. Sunday and Monday and Tuesday are days as well where we think thunderstorm coverage will be pretty good. Severe weather could happen with just about any thunderstorm, and this pattern will persist into early next week before there's a bit of a shift, I think late next week, which will turn off the monsoon for at least a, a temporary amount of time. Now let's take a look at that humidity I was talking about. This map I'm showing you is showing dew point temperature. Now a dew point temperature is basically a measure of how much water there is in the air. So let's take a look here at Burlington, Colorado. A dew point this morning, these are this morning's dew points. A dew point of 61 means that if it cooled to 61 degrees Fahrenheit, you'd have fog or 100% humidity. Usually around here, dew points this time of year are in the 30s, 40s, maybe the lower 50s like we have over here. But you can see the tongue of moisture. Anywhere you see a 60 degree or more dew point, that is a really moist air mass for this part of the country. So you can see this tongue of moisture, very deep moisture coming up here. But also when you get dew point temperatures west of the Continental Divide that are in the 50s, well, that's pretty moist as well. So even these blue areas have high humidity. And we'll show you a map of these dew point temperatures later in the weekend to show you how that moisture moves around. But this is the type of humidity the type of mugginess that you get in the Midwest this time of year. Of course, it makes the corn grow, but it can be a little bit of oppressive, especially when it drifts more into here. Taking a look at the latest drought monitor, but really just not good news anywhere across the Western High Plains. We continue to see a worsening drought situation in north central and central areas of Wyoming. Parts of Sheridan, Johnson County, Campbell County, down around the Casper area, up along the Bighorns, then back into the Wind River Basin. This is kind of an island where the dryness has persisted, and I don't have good news. This area, I'm afraid to say, while well, it has some rain chances, it's just not going to be enough as the monsoon moisture flow is really wanting to come up through here and staying south and east. And I think at least with this next round of monsoon moisture, that's how it's going to go. We also see some expanding drought conditions getting further northeast into Colorado. So we've got a lot more in terms of yellow conditions and conditions that are brown and red here with severe drought conditions now showing up in parts of Wyoming that wasn't there a week ago. Now let's look where we were a year ago. I showed you a map like this last week. A year ago, for the exact same date, there was no drought really anywhere couple of dry pockets, but that's about it. So look how much has changed in a year. Now, going forward, let's step you through the next several days. We'll show you these precipitable water maps to give you an idea of where the better thunderstorms are going to be. For the afternoon hours of today, the deeper moisture in this you can find here in the green, but also anything that's white is going to have a fairly good amount of precipitable water as well. So anywhere you see white, green, or blue, there's going to be a chance for some shower and thunderstorm activity today. The deepest moisture in Colorado's western slope back into Utah. So some really good rain producing thunderstorms will be noted here. Maybe southeastern Colorado as well. Then back up here into Montana and Idaho and eastern Oregon. Now as we go into tomorrow, notice the change. Tomorrow the axis of the deepest moisture has shifted more south and east. And most of Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, Colorado in green. So Friday, the chances of rain producing thunderstorms will be pretty high, especially in this area right here. We'll need to watch out for some heavy rain and hail in that area tomorrow. Saturday, notice the air dries out some. There's a pocket of drier air coming in and the axis of deeper moisture is going to be more into Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas, and New Mexico. While up into Wyoming, we may see a decrease in thunderstorm coverage briefly for Saturday and a drier pocket of air that's up here. That's going to come in later next week up there. Now, 
That's Saturday, but for Sunday, well, the moisture returns and gets deep again east of the divide. Sunday is another day. Friday and Sunday are two days where we're going to see some heavy rain, typical monsoon driven heavy rain, thunderstorms, hail, severe weather is a possibility. So Friday and Sunday are two days to kind of circle on your calendar and watch out for. In between those days, more of a garden variety shower and thunderstorm pattern with maybe a little bit of a decrease in thunderstorms on Saturday. Now here's an example of those dew points again. This is Sunday afternoon. This is why I'm highlighting Sunday as a day where there could be a lot of rain in some areas. Look how deep and thick that moisture is with dew points in the 60s and 70s there. But also notice the contrast. Look at the contrast between eastern areas of the divide and areas west of the divide. Dew points drop into the 20s west of the divide during the second half of the weekend. So again, it's going to be the areas that are going to get wet will be east of the Continental Divide, harder to get wet west of the divide. That's been the pattern all summer. That'll be the pattern through the weekend and early next week. So we got to hope, especially Friday as a day where some areas west of the divide can get some good rainfall. The precipitation forecast through Sunday afternoon looks like this. Again, now that I showed you those precipitable water maps, you know why the heavier precipitation axis continues to line up right there. Either side of that axis, the thunderstorm chances are lower and precipitation amounts are lower like there. Thanks for listening to watching the Day Weather Podcast. We'll talk to you on Friday.